Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at creating little user groups that allows users to post to a group uh, and see the posts from other members in that group. Now in this case it's pretty minimum product, but you can of course see the value in this and let's say a uh, toy project I was messing around with earlier was the idea of having like a uh, watch party suggestion list where you know a group of your friends all suggest what you want to watch Maybe you upvote whatever you want to watch and then sort by upvoted, and that's how you pick what you watch for movie night on Discord. Uh, something similar here uh, is, you know, a little bit of a group thing. So you have your members here. Your posts, of course, are the videos you're voting on or whatever. Uh, and this allows you to only see stuff from your group. Now, on my homepage here, I'm listing off multiple groups, uh, but in this case, I'm only a member of group one. I could, of course, come over to group one, go back to... Uh, let's say, let's go over to groups uh, as a whole. And in groups, I could also join group two. And now if I come back over to localhost port 3000, now I can see all of the members in group one and the posts in group one, as well as the members in group two. And it's pretty much that simple. If I wanna leave one of these, I can just click on the group and then leave there. Uh, alternatively, you could just make the leave button display here on the home page. But yeah, that's basically what we're going to be creating. It's pretty simple, but of course, this is a function, a piece of functionality that you're going to need uh, across quite a few applications, depending on what you want to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's just create this real quick. We'll say Rails new video, and then we'll go ahead and we'll CD into it and run a code dot, which open this up in VS Code, which is of course our code editor. I'm going to go ahead and move my notes around while that runs. Uh, there are quite a few generation commands for this. And then there's going to be a little bit of like ERB markup that we have to do. But aside from that, we're pretty much uh, pretty much done as soon as we generate the app, really. So what we need for this is, of course, device. So let's come into our gem file, do a gem for device. We can then go ahead and run a bundle command in our terminal. After we do that, we then want to run a Rails G device colon install command. Let me go ahead and get rid of this so we can do this one command at a time. And then we want to do a Rails G devise user command, just like that. All right, so now we have our user accounts. So now we have to go ahead and generate our groups. So uh, for this, what I think we should do is start with a uh, generator. So we'll say Rails G scaffold for our groups. We'll give each group a name. You could of course include more here for this one. I'm just going with a name. After we generate the groups, the next thing I want to do is a Rails G scaffold post. And for each of these, we're going to do a title and a body of type text. And then we need to do a group colon references and a user colon references, which is going to set up that belongs to for us. So we can go ahead and run that. That will set up those, but there's one more that we want to do here, which is going to be a join table. So we're going to say Rails G migration uh, create, let me see, join, if I hit uh, the up arrow key, maybe, nope, uh, create join table user group. We want this to be for the users and the groups. And just by typing it like this with the create join table and the, the two things that we want to join, Rails will be able to figure this out. So we're, we're going to go ahead and open up this migration real quick. We have F11 to exit out of here. Let's come into our DB, our migrate, and this last migration here. You can see here it's offering us two optional index, uh, indexes or indices uh, for the user group ID and the group ID and the user ID. So you could just take these, do something like this, and run a Rails DB colon migrate without really thinking, and that'll just work for you. Okay, so that takes care of our join table. Next thing that we want to take care of are our models. Let's come into our models and our group.rb. So our group is going to has and belongs to many users, and then it's going to has many posts because you can see posts from a group. Next, let's come into our post.rb. We can see here it already belongs to each, that's good. And now we have to come into our user.rb. In our user.rb, this is of course going to has many posts. And then we're going to has and belongs to many groups, just like that. So this of course sets up that association where a user has many groups and a user belongs to many groups. So you can see why it's worded that way. We can go ahead and close all of our models at this point, we're done with those. Let's go ahead and let's generate a controller Let's say Rails G controller pages home. 
so that we can have a home page to look at. Next, let's come into our controllers and let's come into our groups controller, or sorry, not our groups, our post controller. So in our post controller, what we want to do is in our create action, when we create a new post, we don't want to do this at post equals blah, blah, blah. Instead, we're gonna do a at group equals a group not find by params, and this is going to be the group ID. And then we can do at post equals at group dot posts dot build. And then you can do a post params dot merge where you merge in the user ID, which is the current user dot ID. And that will now give you that completed post just like that. Next thing we want to do is create a seed file. So we'll come over here to our seeds.rb. Uh, this is just if you want to, you know, fully set up this the seed file. I'm going to be copying and pasting some of this. Uh, but first thing we do is we make sure we delete all of our stuff in case it's still in there. Not entirely necessary, but it does help you sometimes where you run these migrations multiple times in a row and it just fails to work. Next, we're going to create two users. Of course, this is with device, which means each one gets a user uh, or an email, a password and a password confirmation. So anytime you create a user with device, it's going to look identical to this. Afterwards, we're going to go ahead and create the groups. So this is just two quick little group creates. Next, we're going to add the users to a couple of these groups. So we'll add user one to group one and user two to group one. And then we'll only add user two to group two. Next, we need to create some posts come in here and we can say, all right, well, we got a group one. Let's create two posts for group one, which of course takes in a title, a body and a user. We just pass in those users we just created, which is why we gave them the variables. And then finally, we're going to create one post for group two. And because I'm uh, lazy, what I usually do here is I also just create a user account for myself, which is usually just like this, where I say set this to be dean at example.com with a password, a password. Go ahead and tab this over one and now save this. We can come over to our terminal, run a Rails DB colon migrate, because I forget if I did this already. Looks like I did. Then we can do a Rails DB colon seed, just like that. Uh, oops, and we are running into an issue here in our uh, group.rb. So let's come into our group.rb. Uh, this needs to be an underscore, just like that. And now let's go ahead and let's run this DB seed again. And now we're good to go. Cool. Okay, so now we've got our database seeded. Let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S and then let's come into our routes.rb. In our routes.rb, let's set the root of the application to be the pages controller and the home action. Just like that, go over here and refresh. It looks good. Now for the rest of the routes here, we're gonna be doing some, some things. Uh, we do need our join and our leave button. So in here, we're gonna do a post to join. And this will be on member. And then we can do a delete leave on member. And the final thing is, uh, well, I guess I'll leave it like this for now, but we are going to come back in here in a minute. Uh, but I would rather you see the error first because looking at errors is a good thing. Uh, so now that we have that, let's come into our pages controller. And in our pages controller, uh, we can optionally declare our groups for our user. Or we can just say like uh, current user dot groups. Uh, this is one thing you can do, but because of how we're setting this up, we would then have to do a if current user or whatever, or return unless current user. So instead, we're going to leave this empty, and I'm going to show you to just how to just do this in line. So we're going to come up here to our views, our pages, and our home page. In our home page, what we want to do is uh, do a quick little check where we say if the current user is uh, signed in. If they are signed in, we want to create a uh, sign out link and then else we'll just go ahead and render a sign in and a sign up button. If we do this and we refresh, we now have our sign in and sign up options here. I'm going to go ahead and sign in as dean at example.com with a password of password. And now for this, we can go ahead and create our groups. I'm going to go ahead and in here do a quick little render, oops, a render for a partial this partial will be uh, called, uh, let's see, what do we want to call this? We'll just call this like uh, groups slash feed or something, something like that. And then we can come into our groups, right click new file underscore feed dot html dot erb because it's a partial. So it needs to start with feed. Now in here, what I want to do is grab our current user because this is happening inside of our home. We know we already have the user signed in. Uh, so I want to grab this current user dot groups dot each. And then for each of the groups, I want to start by linking to the group name. 
So we're signed in, but we're not seeing anything. What that means is we have to come over to our localhost port 3000 slash groups, and we have to show one of these groups. So we can't join these yet. Let's go ahead and let's set up the joining. To join the groups, we wanna come into our group partial, and in our group partial, uh, pretty simple stuff, really. What we wanna do is a quick little check if this group.users.includes the current user. If it does, we want to link to that leave button route we just created, or leave group route, sorry. Uh, else, we want to join the group. Pretty simple stuff. Our method, of course, is delete and post, respectively. Next, uh, what I want to do in the groups real quick is just list out the members. So we're going to say members, colon, and then we're going to do group.users.each, and we'll just list off the user.email. We can come in here and refresh, but this button won't do anything yet because we still have to come into our groups controller. And in our groups controller at the bottom here, we want to quickly create a join action. This is going to look like this. Grab the users and pass in or push in the current user. Redirect to the group URL with a notice that says you joined the group. And then similarly for the leave button, we'll do the uh, same thing, but instead we'll do users.delete and that'll also work. We can go ahead and close the groups controller now. Now let's come over here and refresh. We can click join and we can see at group.users uh, can't be pushed in. So back in our groups controller at the bottom here for these at groups, I forgot to do this. We need to call set group. So let's come up to the top and add the join and the leave actions there. Now let's go ahead and refresh, click on join. You can see you've joined group one. You can leave, you've left the group works pretty good. If we come back to our dashboard after having joined, we can now refresh and we can see a link to group one. So that's working pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, what I want to do now is in our feed partial here, or I guess actually in our home partial, because this link doesn't really have anything breaking it up, I'm going to start with a BR here, just so that our group starts on a new, uh, a new line. So now we have our group one. For our group one, I want to do a couple things. So I want to uh, list off the current members again, just like this, go ahead and save this. And now we can see here's our block of members. We just go through each of the members, just like we did in the other place. Now we have used this twice, both here and in our group. If we use it a third time, we probably want to move it into a partial. Right now we're kind of okay, although you can already see how this would be something you might want to uh, do you know in in a in one place so you have an easier time maintaining it but okay let's come down here below our ul and let's display each of the posts so we grab the group dot post dot each uh, do post and then we link to the post dot title with the group post path and this is why earlier i said we're going to come back to our routes i want to create this group post path because to me this is just a little bit easier to see uh, what this is linking to uh, so let's come back into our routes. And the way you can do this is you can just say, well, I want some resources for my posts inside of my groups do block, which is then going to not just give you a post path, but it'll also give you a group underscore and then all of your regular post crud actions. So now we can do this and we can click on post one in group one, and this will take us to group slash one slash post slash one. If we click back to post, this will take us to our entire post page. Uh, but uh, this allows us to navigate in a way like that where we can still see group slash one. So if we come up here and we get rid of the posts and go to group one in particular. So that's pretty cool. So that's how we can handle each of these posts. Now at the bottom here after our groups, I want to do an HR because I like having this horizontal divider for any future posts or groups that we might join. So we come over here to groups again and join group two. Now if we refresh, you'll see we got our divider here between our groups. And it gives us a little padding on the bottom too. But yeah, this is effectively it. It's again, really not that, that involved. Uh, it's just a matter of setting it up. And now you have this ability to create these, these groups where you can of course manage it a bit better. Uh, you can, you know, make sure you're not uh, on, on your like index page or your, your show page uh, showing the, the overall, like um, the IDs of the users and stuff. But uh, for me, I kind of like it like this. Uh, and then in your post, you just get rid of these. So you can come into like your underscore post partial and get rid of maybe the uh, user ID and change this to uh, group.name or something. I think we gave them a name, right? Yeah, we can do that. 
Uh, and then similarly, anywhere else where you, you grab the group, you don't want to use the ID, you instead want to use the name. So now you got something that looks a little bit better. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, hopefully this is helpful uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.